you ever thought about using prairie plants in your landscaping? Today we're going to talk about the benefits of using native plants. We have Joel Van Ruckel. Joel, tell me what are the benefits of using these native plants? These plants that we have in this garden are actually prairie species of plants and they are local ecotype. Okay. They are perennials and they are tough. And they're kind of unique because the plants that you find here in this area in this garden mostly are not ones that you would find at your local garden center. All they right. are actually from the prairie which has been greatly reduced almost down to nothing. Is there a trick to uh, buying the right plants or finding the right seed for your area? Well, there are a lot of plants that only grow in certain areas. So if you were to buy just a generic mix of, right. say, wildflowers, they might come from some place that won't support your plant growing needs in your area. So if you'll contact somebody local, such as a conservation board or an extension, or even do some search on the web, you can find out what some of the local species are. So I are. should ask them what the species are, and, and is there a trick to planting them with your landscaping? You've got rocks here. Yeah. and We have field stone, so again, local rocks, and we made some raised beds, and these are all actually prairie species of plants. Okay. So they take the bright hot sun out here in the wide open, and we don't plant just one solid bunch of uh, plants, we mix them up. We have two or three plants maybe in a group to make it full, but we vary, vary the species so that they don't bloom all at the same time. You have your hand on a... This is unusual. Yeah, this is great. Quickly. This is um, a rattlesnake master, oh, and this, this is the same. bloom right here, uh, again with some of the yellow cone flowers. So as the summer goes by, something blooms, something new blooms next week, and you don't just have one big dead patch. It keeps going forever. What are some of the benefits of using prairie plants? One of the benefits of using prairie plants is that they are very heat and drought tolerant because they come from the prairie. Right. So once these beds are established, they're very low maintenance. Also, it's promoting local ecotype. These are plants that you don't see very often, so it kind of gives you a unique garden because so many of our prairies have been eliminated. These are the plants that actually really existed in them. And tell me what some of these are. Yeah, this one is great. This one is called butterfly milkweed. Okay. And just like its name, the butterfly use it to lay their eggs and the larvae hatch and grow out of there. What about this one? Very common. We've got some purple cone flower, and most people are familiar with that. There's a sand coreopsis right over there. Now, I have a larger area on my property. Are there any uh, tricks you can give me, any pointers on how I could put prairie plants in that? Yeah, we have a bigger area right over here. Let's go right. take a look. Okay. Betsy, now we're in a bigger area, and you can see how we've incorporated the prairie grasses into right. a setting. And we also have included some of the forbs that we saw earlier in the flower garden. All right. The plants here are the grasses that you would find in a tall grass prairie, and this area was covered with that. We have a big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass, side oats gamma. Those are common plants for this area. You mentioned forbs, and that's another word for flowers? Yeah, the flowering plants here in the prairie. Um, this is more how you would see them not so tight as in the landscaping spot. Right. So how would I go about establishing prairie plants? Establishing is probably the hardest part. Um, the ground, the plants need to be removed that are there. Okay. So you can start all over. That can be done chemically. It can be burnt. It can be disc. It can be a combination of all those things. All right. Then the seeds are either drilled, scattered, rolled. And as they grow, you're going to deal with some weeds. Um, can a lot you spot of the time, treat those. Spot treat those with chemical. We also recommend mowing that first year or maybe even the second year okay. at a high level. So you're cutting off the weed seed heads, but right. the grasses, which will grow a little bit slower, will still be safe underneath. So about a foot high on the Yeah, mowing. about a foot high. Okay. And then after two or three years, there's a series of burning. We burn sections. The prairies used to burn naturally with lightning strikes, and now since there's such tiny remnants, it just doesn't happen. And you don't want to come in and water this, do you? Is it all natural? No, we, we do baby when we transfer some plants, we might water them a little bit to okay. help get them established. If we transfer them, if they're from seed, then they're just plugged in the ground and they do their own thing. Now tell me some of the plants that are in here, the grasses, 
will come up and be taller later, right? Correct. And right now the flowers or the forbs are taller. Yeah, one of the forbs, it's a good example of that is right over okay. my shoulder. We have some white indigo back there. It's above the grass level now, but these grasses will keep growing after those bloom. These will be up over my head. This is what makes it really fun. Wow, that's interesting. And I see we have a, one of the flowers here we saw in our smaller garden. Right, we saw these earlier, the butterfly milkweed again, and this is a different kind of milkweed. So there's several kinds of milkweed. Yes. Thanks for sharing those tips on using prairie plants, Joel. Now stay tuned for some gardening tips from